Today we're going to talk about how to install Octoprint with Marlin firmware on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P. So what we need to do in this case on this particular board, I'm going to be using the configuration for the Raspberry Pi CM4 without EMMC. So we're going to load it via an SD card down below here. Obviously, there's other types of board to board computers that you can use on your Amp Manta M8P. For instance, there's the CM4 with EMMC. And then now there is the CB1. There's also a model coming out that I haven't been able to obtain yet being the CB1 with EMMC. So I'm gonna be showing you on this particular configuration and hopefully you'll be able to find the board and understand at least the process. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually grab this SD card and I'm using an eight gigabit SD card here and I'm going to insert it into my SD card reader and then insert it into the computer. So you may hear a beep. Now what I'm going to do is go over to my desktop and actually show you where you can find the actual download. So this is the Octoprint website. Obviously you can see the title up here of where to find it. I'll hopefully put this in the description as well for your convenience, but you click on download. Then down here, there's going to be the stable octopi. Now keep in mind this configuration is not normally used for an actual octoprint configuration. So I, We'll point this out just so you know. So let's go down here and click on this. And what you're actually gonna be doing is downloading it right here. I've already downloaded and extracted it. So I'll show you that real quick. If I click on my downloads folder, you can see that there's an Octopi right here and an extracted one. So we're gonna go over to Raspberry Pi Imager, this is version 1.7.4. And we're gonna click on Choose OS, Use Custom. We're gonna select the location of the extracted image file. Then we'll choose the storage, in this case, the SD card. And then we'll click Write. Now, there is additional functionality that was added here. Unfortunately, this configuration doesn't actually uh, work in this case. So you have to modify it after loading. So I'm going to click right and then yes. And what we'll do is we'll give this a couple of minutes. So I'll pause the video until it completes and then I'll pick up from there. Okay, now that it's actually verified and complete, it says you can now remove the SD card from the reader. So we'll click continue, and what I need to do, I'll show you real quick over here. Apparently it's not showing up, so we're gonna have to remove it and then place it back in so we can modify it. So I'm gonna go over to the desktop for a second so you can see what I'm doing. So I just take this out, then I place it back in and you'll hear a beep again. Then I go back over to the desktop and now we can see the drive. So I'm gonna click on the D drive first. One of these may or may not work. So let's try the E drive and here it is. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to find the file we need to modify, which is the octopi wpa supplicant.txt. And I'm gonna open this up in Notepad++. So inside Notepad++, what we need to do is we need to actually remove the comments here. And this is for obviously this type of router configuration. Then you're going to place your SSID, which is the name of your router in here. 
and your password to the router right here. You'll save this, then remove it and place it in your Manta M8P, and I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm going to pause this, modify it, save it, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, I've already saved it, so I'm going to remove it and place it in the actual Manta. So, got it here. I'm probably going to have to use tweezers in my case because this is going to be a little bit of an issue. So, I'm going to rotate it and then slide it in right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to boot the board with 5 volts in this case just so you can see what's occurring. So, I'm going to place a jumper on here. Normally, when you run the board, you're not going to do that. I'm also going to place this in so you can see the actual updating occurring and there's something I want to point out so I'll power it up right through here let me uh, plug in the other end and plug this in and I'll show you what's occurring so give me just a second to pull this up for you okay so it's right now setting up the actual it looks like SSH keys so I'm not exactly sure the definition it might be secure shell it might be something else but this is going to take a second to actually occur once this occurs it's going to start the loading process so this might take a second to actually occur so let's watch it for a moment and see what happens okay it says rebooting in five seconds so after this reboot occurs, we should start to see it load, which will be down in here. So here we go. So you're going to see basically the loading of the operating system from the SD card and it checking to make sure things are okay when it occurs. Once this completes, in theory, if we do this right, we'll see the IP address that it's using to connect to the router. That's the changes that I made in the supplicant file. So let's give this a second to see if that actually pops. It'll be under network monitor, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring it up the moment it appears. So I'm typing in what I think the address will be in a second, but let's see if we've got it here. So normally, whoop, Sorry about this. Normally we would see it in here if it worked. So I'm going to have to go to my router to verify that it actually exists or reboot. So the IP address would show up right here. So let's do that. I'm going to have to blur out a portion of my router address so that uh, you can't see what it actually is. So let's go over to my computer for a second. And on my computer, we have our router name up in here that you can't see. And I'm going to have to go to connected devices to see if it exists. So I'll do that. I have to put in the password. So I'm going to pause this for a second. And as you can see, it came up right here as 192.168.1.7. So we're going to go to that address and see if this actually worked. So it looks like it's not working at the moment. But let's give it a little bit more time. What we can also do is try and ping the address to see if it's actually working. We could go to the command prompt and type ping 192.168.1.7. Whoops, ping the wrong number and it doesn't look to be there but something's occurring now looks like it's trying to load octoprint 
It might be that I don't have the antenna or antenna attached. So let's give this a second more. If this is the case, we'll just go over and put the antenna on. So we may have to do that because that might be my issue. So let me pause this for a second and bring up the actual desk. Well, it's actually working. I'm sorry about that. So let's see, access control. So we're gonna go next. We don't have anything to back up, so we'll go next. Username, we'll do pi, and we'll do rasp very. Then we'll do rasp very. Then we'll create an account. We're not gonna actually uh, save this password, but we'll do next. Now we'll do a test of the host port to see if that it's okay. Looks like that should be fine. Test the resolution. Hopefully this will be fine as well. It may take a while because I don't have the antenna connected. So let's see, it looks like it worked. So we'll do enable connectivity check next. Let's see, please check online for connectivity check it says login successful there's just a bunch of stuff here let's do this again sorry without the antenna this probably takes a little bit longer than normal so i might attach it just to make life easier there we go um let's see configure for anonymous tracking disable is what i like to do so I'll go next. We'll enable blacklist plugin processing, or you can disable it, that's up to you. Next, um, default name you can change to whatever you want. For now I'm gonna leave it. Next, and then finished. So this might take a second to actually finish, because I have a lovely connection without the antenna. So of course it's giving you the warnings that you have to keep in mind here. So let's see if this goes away. Otherwise what I'll do is I'll put the antenna on just to make this easier. There we go. So now that we're connected here, we want to try and connect to the board. So we're going to click connect and see if it automatically connects. Obviously this probably might take a few moments to actually connect if it does. And obviously I should have the antenna connected. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the antenna on because this is just uh, a little too slow. Normally I don't do this while it's powered, but in this case I'm thinking I'm gonna be okay. So the antenna is located right here on the edge of the board. So I'm gonna clip that in and just put the antenna over here. Now our connectivity at least is quicker. So let's go back over to the desktop and let's see what's going on. It says uh, firmware development build. Your printer is a firmware development build from Marlin. It's telling us that uh, we're using an actual uh, regular uh, bug fix build. This isn't the release build, so it's a warning. That's one of the reasons I want to point you to the release builds, but let's see if we can test something on it. I'm just going to test an end stop. So I'm going to go to terminal. We can see there's temperature being monitored, but I'm going to do M119. Everything is disconnected. This is just to see if we're getting a response back. So we are getting a response back from the motherboard right here. It's saying everything is triggered because nothing is connected. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And I do need to thank a couple of people being Big Tree Tech for providing the Manta M8P. 
And I also need to thank uh, my patrons and people on PayPal for their donations so that I can actually purchase equipment to do these. And also, this is Keith for helping me deal with the build issues associated with the Marlin bug fix build for installing Marlin. So everyone take care, be safe, and remember to like and subscribe.